Dat is jullie weten. Twee, één, test. Hey! Ik ga niet zingen, daar voel ik me te brak voor. Mensen die thuis zitten te kijken, ga naar je bed. Dan doe je tenminste nog iets verstandigs. En voor de rest, welkom. Het lijkt bijna alsof ik hier de onderzochtend mis ga doen, maar dat ga ik toch echt niet doen. Um, who in the audience doesn't understand Dutch? Oké, okay, that means I need to speak English. No problem. I'll try to do that, although I'm barely awake. Um, this is, to be honest, a boring talk. Let me put that on out there to start with. So I don't get your hopes up, right? Um, I'm gonna make a case uh, what I, I think is ANBS uh, Foundation and what an ANBS is. I will explain the talk. There's no demonstration, there's no software involved, it's just some silly idea. So you can still go out there and grab a coffee and anyway. Um, so who, I, who am I? My name is Jerome Batten. I'm a lifetime innovator I think. Well so far so good. Maybe I stick to plumbing in a few years and then I'll be a lifetime plumber. Um, I call myself a solutionist because I try to solve problems. Um, in pictures uh, I've also been at 10 years of volunteer firefighter, I've been in open source for 20 years and I've got a wheelchair adapted van with a large tux on it and the tux was a gift from my lovely wife and I say lovely with a lot of emphasis because she just came in. Um, why this talk? Because I believe we need an ANBS. Now what the hell is an ANBS? Uh, it's a cliffhanger, I'll keep it on there. Okay, so a what? Well, an A and B S is a play on the A and B I, and the A and B I is an uh, abbreviation in Dutch, saying uh, "algemeen nut beogende instelling," and it's it's a sort of a uh, um, a label that the Dutch revenue system can put on a foundation. So, if you are a foundation that doesn't make try to make profit, and you try to make something good in the world, you get you can ask for them for the ANBI label and they will under circumstances give it to you but the circumstances are neatly listed on their website. In general if you've got an idea and you want to make the world better and you don't want to make a profit doing it you're probably uh, qualified to become an ANBI. Um, I think there should also in English it's an, a public benefit organization. Um, I think uh, we should have an ANBS foundation being an algemeen nut beogende software foundation. So, um, um, yeah, public benefit software. I think we need, I strongly believe, we need some sort of institution that governs, manages, initiates, funds, whatever um, public benefit software. Now, let me, to, to, this is the boring part, so let's try to give you some examples in a historical context. Uh, for one, at some point in time there was the need for high volume traffic. How do we, uh, when, when all, all we did was ride in, in ho on horses and at some point there kept, became cars and a couple of years later there were a lot of cars and there was a need to, to get people in high volume from A to B. Um, the other example is the need for resilient data connections. So that's more IT. But let's first go to the high volume traffic. So um, in Dutch we all, s a lot of people say that the highway uh, as such was invented by the Germans prior to World War II. Well, if you look in history it seems to be a little different. 
The first real highway was in 1911 in the US, the Long Island Motor Parkway. Um, um, yeah, Long, Long Island Motor Park. Oh, I put that there twice. Um, uh, anyway, in 1921, they realized, well, we've got a highway, but we need have the need for more highways, and we need to fund and structure that that development. So they invented the U.S. Federal Highway Eight Federal Eight Highway Act. We, the people, blah 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 blah. We need highways, and there was funding, and highways became um, came were built then. Um, so the first highway in uh, in, in Europe was in uh, 1932, Bond Köhlen, um, just one year prior to uh, um, Adolf uh, getting into power. Um, in 1930, the Dutch were very brilliant. We don't need no stinking highways, um, and uh, that was very. Uh, they were very adamant about it. And in 37, uh, we had our first highway. Den Haag Sutermeer, which is not a real big distance. Um, bottom line, publicly funded infrastructure. Now, this is what it's all about, publicly funded infrastructure. So let's, let's pick that term, or three terms, publicly funded infrastructure, and put it into IT. So at some point in time, we uh, had, uh, well, we, uh, the US, uh, in, in, in 57, they, they scared the shit out, out of the, each other when the Sputniks suddenly became alive and they s uh, said to each other in the US, oh, goddamn, uh, we need a network uh, because uh, they've got something in space and in time they will put something in space with an atom bomb and the atom bomb will fall on, on our country and uh, uh, what do we, how can we build uh, disaster resilient uh, data connections. Well, the, the, the first question at that point was, what the hell is a data connection? Because th there was no data uh, ne network. There was no network at all. You, you had a network within an organization, but you didn't have an inter-organization network. Didn't exist. But somebody had a, a brain fart, and uh, in, in 68 they had a plan. Um, so it took them 10 years to develop a plan. Uh, then they uh, submitted t a tender, uh, people subscribed to the tender, and um, in, uh, in uh, 69, one year later, the first data packet was uh, uh, sent from one end to the other end over a very short uh, distance, but nevertheless, a distance. It's actually very, um, there are a lot of uh, stories about that period, like, um, two universities wanted to have a lease line. And you know what a lease line is, eh? you have the phone on this end and you have the phone on that end, but you don't need to dial a number because it's a, it's a fixed connection. So um, somebody called AT&T, being um, the, the, the telephone company, and said, we, well, we, we need some form of permanent connection over a phone line. Well, sure, we can give you a phone line and a telephone, and you can dial a number, and the other end will ring. No, we want a permanent connection. No, we don't do that. Hmm. Well, we still want it. Yeah, well, we don't. And anyway, so it took some time before they, they got what they wanted. And at some point, it's even... Has anybody ever heard of the name Borland Software? Borland as in C compiler, Pascal compiler. Well, the guy that invented Borland, Philip Kahn, uh, when he was a student, he was the one on a Saturday morning who connected two universities because it was a 40-minute walk, uh, which meant that uh, since th it was impossible to get a lease line, he climbed every telephone pole and put the wire in himself. So, um, and, and the first modem was... Uh, one big 19 inch rack with the lower half the mo and the upper half the dem yeah, modulator, demodulator um, I guess you know that um, anyway so um, uh, um, the first uh, packet was, uh, was sent in 1969 it was a DARPA project I guess you all heard the story it became the internet in 1990 uh, the, the DARPA ended its function its funding so people start thinking, well, we love the internet, but 
it's got no more defense funding, so how do we fund it? They found out a, a very nice model. Everybody pays for the next connection to the, to the network. And it worked out fine. I mean, everybody now is hooked up to internet and high-speed porn. Um, uh, sorry, high-speed internet websites. Um, actually, talking about porn. Uh, oh, sorry, this is broadcasted. Uh, doesn't matter. There's a very nice TED lecture on uh, with the subject uh, the the big porn experiment, and it's a, 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 a psychology major who tries to find to uh, find subjects for an investigation into internet porn. And uh, the strange thing is that you always need a reference group that has never been uh, exposed to the subject of your investigation, and it's impossible to find subjects who have experienced internet porn after the age of 14. But that's a whole different story. It's a nice lecture though, the, the TED lecture then, not this one, but the text lecture. I can highly recommend it. Um, anyway, in the end, the internet, uh, you've you got a lot of foundations there doing stuff. Everybody pays their part. Huh? That's the foundation of, 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 of the internet. Now, where are we now? Well, as you know, internet connected software is running the world, right? Not only porn, but you know, uh, YouTube, uh, Facebook, whatever, uh, news, uh, shopping, it's all done via the internet. The internet is pretty crucial infrastructure to life at the moment. Um, it's got benefits, it's got some disadvantages. Uh, yeah, we, live, we love web shopping, but we hate the fact that a lot of shops close their doors because, well, people are up on the internet. Um, anyway, so an internet infrastructure code is open source. But what about the next year? If you go beyond the infrastructure, um, let's look at the current software market. It's primarily okay. Okay. It's primarily a commercial market. So the infrastructure, the internet infrastructure, is open source, and the rest is a commercial market. And um, since 1985, 1990. Uh, something came up in politics called neoliberalism and neoliberalism neoliberal basically says everything can be solved by the market and um, I humbly disagree well not humbly but I disagree pretty strongly um, anyway so the government these days is neoliberal saying oh, the market shall handle it if there's no market for it there is no future for it so we are not getting involved. If it's not commercially exploitable, it doesn't have a future. And that worked out brilliantly, except for our real infrastructure uh, and uh, some healthcare uh, issues in the Netherlands. Uh, and probably also a couple of other things. Um, anyway, the government thinks uh, the market shall handle it, the market is the most efficient solution because if, if an entrepreneur is always looking for the most um, efficient solution to produce a product. That, that's what, uh, uh, what he does, because you have, you have this thing called competition. And if you're not efficient, somebody else will uh, take your customers and you perish. And that's not particularly a bad thing, but the question is, do you want to do that for everything? Um, oh, and the market makes everything cheaper and better. Yeah, except for railways, uh, trains running on time, healthcare, and oh, no, wait, uh, it, it should be better, but it isn't. Yeah, because the system is flawed. Um, and there's a lot that you can solve by a commercial market, but I, my point is there's a lot that also needs to be handled in a different way. So, is there nothing else? Well, um, nothing else mattered. Uh, I, I've looked at, um, suppose you have an ideological software ID, and it's not commercially exploitable, but it would be something that would be beneficial to everybody using it. Who can fund that? Suppose I have an idea. Um, 
Yesterday I had this idea about uh, document blockchains and GPG signed documents adding to a blockchain. But let's as an example, let's take that one. Um, you want to have that uh, run in every government. Uh, every government uh, uh, should should use it to, for archiving. Uh, there should not be a license fee involved. Everybody should be able to share the documents because that's good for us as a citizen. Well, if it's good for us as a citizen, it it's not necessarily also good for me uh, being an entrepreneur because I want to make money. Clear, that's my business. My business is making money as, a, as an entrepreneur. Um, so where else could I get funding for this? Uh, the El Nelnet Foundation, let's have a look. It funds those with ideas to fix the internet. Now, okay, but if it ain't broken, don't fix it, right? So. Um, they're there to debug the internet. That's it. And in the end, the internet will be, well, I, w I would say bug free, but at that time somebody else will have an idea and introduce bugs at the same time. So they'll be in business for some time. Um, the NWO, it's uh, the Dutch for, for scientific uh, research. Well, the NWO funds scientific research. Uh, okay, but this is not research. This is, it's not some brilliant, new algorithm. No, it's just a piece of software that's beneficial to us all. That's something different. It doesn't have to be uh, uh, brilliant and um, uh, very hard to make. It's just uh, something that we would benefit all from. Uh, startups, or otherwise known as the market. Should they, well, a startup is very much pressed for cash. So they're not interested in doing something that's beneficial to you all for free because they want to make money. Hmm. Well, what do we need? We need a way to create software for public benefit. And software that's in the heart of the society and not necessarily uh, commercially exploitable. Um, so software for which there is no commercial initiatives. The, because there's no market. Maybe there will become a market for add-ons or services or whatever, but at some point in time there's no market. Um, well, do I have ideas for this kind of software? Examples. Well, I, yesterday my talk was about blockchain and GPG signed uh, documents, so if you attended that one, I, I, I'm not going to repeat that. But what about archiving, archiving software for digital assets? Uh, just to archive sing things and, and, and put some extra tags on it because in 200 years time you want to be able to do research search on the digital assets that are being made today. And it, with a photo, it's, it's not only the photo, but it's who made the photo, when did he make the photo, uh, why did he make the photo, all kinds of additional information that in 200 years time researchers will be craving for that kind of information. Oh, I've got a nice picture here, but I don't know what the context is. Um, converting international software to multi-language. That's something that I think uh, a, a public benefit, soft, public benefit software foundation would, be, would excel at. Well, what do I mean here? Um, as an example, in France, there is the, the France government has uh, open sourced uh, a piece of software for case management. And case management is something that every every uh, a munici munici municipality does. And it's in French. The, it's French software. Now, the f if you want to adapt that software for the German market, um, there are two steps. The first step is change the software to become, in principle, multi language. And the second step is translating the French strings to German strings. I hope you understand there are two separate steps. And the first step, adapting the software to become multi-language, is something that takes some time. It's an investment. But after you've done that, every other German competitor will say, hey, thanks for the investment. I'll do the translation from French to German because that's peanuts. And thanks for the software. So as a company, although you want to provide services for uh, an open source project that originates in France, you are not interested in doing that first investment because everybody else will benefit for it but you're a commercial entity and it's not your business to 
give stuff away. You've got a commercial uh, uh, angle on, on stuff. Um, so this is something that an ANBS or the EU, I think, could very, very likely fund to, to not translate it to another language, because that's the other step, but make it, making it possible to uh, making something multi-language. Um, and the other one is medical data analysis for rare diseases, because rare diseases are not interested for pharmaceutical companies, because it's a very small group of patients. And the bigger the, 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 the patient population, the higher uh, the revenue. And as a commercial entity, you're into commercial um, uh, revenue. So, um, why do we need it? Well, how do you feel about being dependent on a commercial company and its focus? And I'm not talking about your, your um, office suite or, uh, thank God we've got LibreOffice, um, and I'm not talking about, I don't know, any random software application, but I'm talking about software that's at the heart of a society. Um, do, well, do we like the fact that the software in voting computers is closed source? Well, we have got, we had the discussion, it's, so far it's settled, we don't like it, but that's my point. Uh, do we um, like the fact that uh, the, our uh, public transport uh, chip card, that the software is also closed source? Wouldn't it be nice if it was open source so everybody could make add-ons on this uh, platform? Just an idea. So, that's why we need it. When do we need it? Well, pretty soon. And the last slide. Of course, uh, you know the joke, who are we? Browsers. What do we want to work perfectly? When do we want it? And Internet Explorer says, browsers! Well, I guess you've heard that before. Um, anyway, so that's my talk. That was my point. And like I uh, predicted, it's boring. And at least two or three people have left during my talk. Um, which makes me, of course, very humble. Are there any questions? I yeah, thought so. Now, I would presume that this is the end of the talk, uh, and um, we all go back to our own lives and start waking up. It's too early for this kind of stuff, you know? Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I think it's a global issue. And I think it's important because, like I said, a lot of Western countries at the moment are under the influence of neoliberalism and although I like the market, it, I don't believe the market will solve anything, everything and that's what uh, a lot of people are still thinking. If it's not something that can be solved by a commercial market, it's not interesting at all. And next what you see is that the, the, the trains are... It's, I talked to a guy who works for a contractor that repairs um, uh, glitches, uh, uh, disruptions in, in, the, in the Dutch traffic system, Dutch uh, railroad traffic system. So you have the Dutch uh, uh, railway si uh, railroad system and you have the ProRail which does the infrastructure. So he works as a contractor for the infrastructure company. And they get, get sent to a place because there is something uh, not working there. So they dig up the cables and they see the, 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 the source of the problem. 
they uh, repair it and they see that 50 centimeters away there's a cable that's barely holding by a thread because of, of wear and tear but it's still working and um, if they repair that they don't get paid for it because they've been sent to repair something else so they don't repair it and they know that in two three months time they will get another call just at the same place to repair something else happening there because that's what commercial companies do and you can't blame them but it's a system that's flawed not that company even if you uh, think we are a gr excellent company we provide excellent services to, to a very nice price great but you don't solve something that's not yet broken because in the end it's also a chance for extra revenue in the future um, so in the end the Dutch government came to the census and put ProRail back into uh, as a go uh, took it back as a government organization in the end um, the same goes with um, market um, uh, market working in the zorg <laughs> uh, I don't know how to translate that but anyway it's uh, seeing healthcare as a commercial market yes and uh, then you want if it's a commercial market you want to check the quality and to check the quality you need protocols and for protocols you need people to register what they are doing and uh, then you can put statistics in place and see if they're doing it right if you have the time to analyze statistics but you don't because you're only entering data and not analyzing it um, and in the end a lot of um, public servants have, have, have thought of so much protocol input parameters that about a quarter of your work is entering data and not caring for people I think then you're missing the point of healthcare and well we've got a, a family at home with uh, let's say extensive experience in the healthcare system um, with a lot of professionals who are very dedicated and I rather see them caring for people than entering data into a computer although I like a computer of course so um, but then I'm going to start all over again and I <laughs> think I should finish Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I'm talking about the quality protocol. So uh, there are several protocols in healthcare that are very smart and very good uh, where you mandate certain steps that seem ridiculous at a lot of times, but it's just to make sure that you don't miss the occasional f step that somebody is suffering from. Uh, something very rare uh, so nothing wrong with a lot of protocols but th entering data for quality purposes uh, a lot of the times I know you have to have a, a health record but um, uh, sometimes they go overboard with with collecting data anyway that's my point already so any more questions Yeah, I know. Yeah.
Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's um, uh, there is this uh, this movie uh, called, if I'm correct, Armageddon, about a meteor crashing into Earth and some uh, a small group of heroic uh, guys uh, flow up, flew, uh, go up in a, a rocket. As somebody who is generally pretty depressing during the movie, but that that's his charm, says. We're all going up on a, I believe, a two billion rocket filled with explosive fuel, consisting of 300,000 parts, all supplied by the cheapest bidder. And yeah, that's basically uh, what neoliberalism is. Um, I once spoke to a, a, a guy in the U.S. who said, "Well, when we tender, we take the." Uh, how you say this in English? Not the cheapest bit, but the second one. Because the cheapest bit is always too cheap, so we take the next one, and then we have and cheap and better quality. It's um, something to think about. Anyway, so uh, thank you for attending. Yes? Yeah, that's a very good question, and I don't have the answer yet. Um, I think, but what you you can easily organize it. You can organize a foundation, give them funding. That's easy. Eh? So just imagine there's money, then funding is easy. Um, what you can do is you can instigate a, a control group um, with a, a few people in them uh, who uh, ha who oversee the workings of the foundation, and you, every year you report on the stuff that you initiate or you have that group also check if you think well we've got a very big idea here and it costs a lot of money what do you guys think should we and uh, there's of course uh, there are some laws um, in the Netherlands to forbid um, the government for fu from funding things that the market should do um, it's it's gone a little overboard, so the, 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 the power is now at the market side. Which So as soon as a, com a few companies decide to get it, oh, they're not supposed to develop that because this could be our market, then they step in and forbid the development of. I, I think that's uh, a, li a little bit pushing it. Um, but it should be possible, I think, to, to, have, uh, to have a foundation be government governed by um, uh, a committee that uh, decides if it's a good idea or not. And um, it's different uh, than, uh, well, I said it earlier, uh, than a commercial intake. It's just um, is this something that would be beneficial to the public? And if you have a proposal, you write in that proposal why you think it's beneficial to the public. Okie dokie. Well, you could you could try to solve that with tenders as well. That 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 part you could solve with tenders. But um, um, yeah, it's the, 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 there are other questions involved. And this is interesting for discussion. Do you obligate tenders to be? Uh, suppose it's a software development uh, project. That's easy for us. Um, do you uh, mandate that it's being programmed by programmers from your country? Or do you allow uh, cheap labor? Um, because it's cheaper. Um, in the end, the, 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 the society will benefit. So, I don't know. I haven't thought of that yet. But I think that's something for that foundation to, to think about. Okay. If you've got any more questions, I'll be over there getting awake very slowly. Um, and thank you for your attention.